I'm Exo, and this video will be about the new and improved installer for Exodus version 6. Uh, first, we switch over here, uh, and you can see on the left hand side here, I have the actual batch file. On the right hand side is my Exodus folder. Uh, it's an installed copy already. Let's just talk through what we got going here. Right, right off the bat, it's going to set some variables to false because they should be false unless they get determined to be true later on. What they're doing now is checking through your content subfolder. Now your content folder is one of only two folders you have when you first get the pack. You've got your content folder and your exo folder. All the rest of this you see in here gets extracted at that time. In your content folder, you've got three files and a folder. Your DOS metadata, your launch box, and your exo DOS metadata. If you have the media pack, it will check inside here for those files. Uh, you've got magazines, books, catalogs, and soundtracks. Now this one I need to actually delete out because we have moved that into the game data folder. Look at that. Real-time editing while we're doing the video. How cool is that? If you have any of these, it determines that you do have at least part of the content pack and that will change things later on. Uh, so if you download the content pack, those go right in this folder and it will detect them, install them as it goes. It can also determine... Um, exactly which content you have and then it's going to come through and see that exclamation mark that tells it what platform so we have exclamation mark dos if you want to merge another pack in here then you'll have your exclamation mark like win 3x metadata does zip exclamation mark exoscum vm or scum vm metadata does zip exclamation mark apple 2gs so it's checking that and it's picking the name out of that file name and it's creating uh, a list of some of the uh, packs you have in there. Uh, the first it's determining what your main pack is. And then it's going through and counting how many files you have that have an exclamation mark. That tells it how many times or how many packs it needs to merge together later on. And if you only have one, no merge process. Uh, the count would stay uh, at zero. I'm sorry, at one at that point. Uh, so you can see here if the count is greater than one, multi equals true. Multi being there is more than one pack in there. We're going to come down here, we're going to set the, the name of the directory that you're installing from, and we're going to come down a little further, check for free space on the drive, make sure that we have enough of that. And then it's going to look and see if you have a LaunchBox EXE already. In this case, if I ran it, it would say, hey, you've got that, and it would go to what we call A1, which is a update or reinstall. If you don't have that file, then it's a clean install. So that's how it's determining which way to go here. So far, you can see that the big part of so everything it's done so far is determining which path to take. And so choose your own adventure, and right now it's choosing the adventure that you're going to go on when you run this file. Um, so if not exist, I'm sorry, if it doesn't exist, it's going to be at A1. So if we continue here, we're assuming you do have LaunchBox EXE. So exist now equals true. It's going to go over to your utility folder and see if you have the choice.exe because it needs that for you to make any choices in these menus. It's going to go ahead and grab it if it don't have it. And we're going to come on down here and it's going to say, hey, you've already got a project in this folder and the media pack has been detected. Do you want to install a full pack or just add the media item? So that's if you have launchbox.exe exists and you have data in the content folder that is considered part of the content pack. You can check a full install or just the media add-on pack. If you go to the media install, it's going to go through and zip all those for you. Not that one, because we don't have it anymore. And then at that, it's going to jump over here, and it's going to run our XOLB PM, our LaunchBox Parent Manager. And this is a tool that Timber, uh, one of the leads over at Exodus, wrote, and it, it dynamically inserts content into the parents.xml file. It sits over here under data. And you can see here, uh, parents. It looks like you got some extra files hanging out here we can get rid of. This parents file tells LaunchBox how to nest platforms in the platform category, the, the view on the side there. And then it says done. Now, if it doesn't have a content pack or you want to do the full install, it comes down here and it says, you've got an exo project. It's already been set up. If multi is true. It will say that more than one pack has been detected. If you continue, they will be installed together. If it's false, it will just say press C to continue. There's a lot of if this, write that, if that, write this. That way we can have one menu choice, but with different dynamic, well, context appropriate uh, text 
before that choice. As we come down here, uh, this is getting into the merge section here. Um, if you only have one pack, it says welcome to XO, in this case, DOS. If you have more than one pack, welcome to XO Merge, because there's no way for me to write, I don't know which pack you want it to be called at that point, so we're just going to call it XO Merge. Um, it's going to let you know that all XO projects that are in the uh, installed in that content folder will be installed at the same time. Now, if you were to download Exodos or ExoWin3x, you will have the same thing, a content folder and an Exo folder. If you were to download Apple 2GS, Scum VM, RLP, the Retro Learning Project, any of them, they all have a content folder and an Exo folder. If you want to merge your packs, and there will be a whole other video about this, but all you do is take all of the different packs you want to merge and put them in the same folder. That content folder will have... Um, all the different exclamation mark packs. Now, a key to that though, you will have multiple copies of launchbox.zip. You always, any of them will work, but it's much better to keep the newest one. You'll have to go through a lot less updating when um, you run it for the first time. That's the only file that has the same name. Uh, all the rest would be different. The util.zip file is different. Unzip's the same, but it doesn't matter. They're all identical. Uh, so when you just put them all in the same folder, you run setup. That's how you merge. Uh, we try to do a real, oh, I try to do a really complicated merge process with the Exo Apple 2GS pack. You could like, it would say, do you want to merge? Hit yes. It brought up a window that you could browse to a folder, pick the pack you wanted to merge into it, pick the destination. It would then go check your, your drive space and make sure you had enough space in the drive. It did all kinds of crap and it was a mess because it was too complicated. I find this to be much simpler and much faster. As we go down here, uh, if you want information, merge instructions, it'll ask you and you can click that button. It'll show you, hey. Copy the following files and subfolders, content, exo, and your setup.bat file. Move them all over. And it even pauses it, tells you to do it. That way um, you can exit. After you unpause, it goes back up here again. You can exit, do that, rerun the process if you want. At this point, it's going to do some error checking. Do you have your util.zip file? You got to have it. The pack won't run without it. You don't have it, it exits setup. Do you have any, if you have no content add-on packs, you'll get this message. It says, hey, there's some magazines, books, catalog soundtracks out there. You put them in your content folder. And then it just continues. Um, you don't have to have that. It just lets you know it, it exists. After that, it'll individually check for packs. So if you have one pack, it'll look for the other ones. Oh, hey, I found that you have magazines, but you didn't have soundtracks. Just letting you know it exists. Catalogs, books, etc. Uh, at that point, it will check for your game data folder. This is a new folder. The game data folder has a subfolder of their project name. So you see other projects listed here uh, going forward. Only version 6 has it right now. Uh, version 3 of ExoWin3X will have it. Uh, version whatever next version of ExoScumVM will have it, etc. Inside there is one file for every game in the pack. And if you open these up, you will find it has the menu music, the manual for the game, and it also has any extras. So in this case, the alternate launcher. Every game has an alternate launcher at least. But there might be other extras. Uh, manuals. Uh, if we go to a game that has a ton of them, like let's say uh, Secret of Monkey Island. You've got your manuals, your music, and then of course you have all these extras. And now I have not updated um, this download yet. But the newest one has a new folder inside all of them. And it actually has the preview video that M. Goddard's team has been working on. Uh, that's also in here now. So in, in this case, you would see the EXO folder, the manuals folder, the music folder, and the video folder. So that's all in the game content at this point. It then goes and checks that you have a metadata.zip file. Because if you don't, um, you're not going to have... This, this file here has every file you need to launch every game. So if you come in here... Go to $10,000 Pyramid, it has the launch file, the configuration file, and the install file. Extras, looks like it has alternate launchers too. So it looks like we may have those in two places. That's worth knowing. That's, might have to change that. Um, gotta have that, but you can't launch the games. The Exodus metadata.zip is going to contain all your images that LaunchFox uses. These are uh, That's the bulk of what this is. If you look here, it's five gigabytes of images. That's box scans, disk scans, title screens, screenshots, fan art, clear logos, anything that, that any image that LaunchFox uses. It also has a single manual. Not It says manuals, but it only has the 
primary manual for the project. Got to have that one, even in a light install, because it's the project one. It has our plugin that Timber has written, and then all the XML files it needs. Uh, this confuses people a lot the way XML works in the in uh, LaunchBox, but over in your data folder platforms, you have all your platforms that have been added to this build. So here you can see I've got MS DOS and I have all four of the content add-on packs installed as a platform. If I go into the all folder here, you can see this MS DOS XML file. That is the same file as this one. So if I ever lost this, I could just grab it out of there and copy it over and I'd have it again. Now, in the family folder, I have one called DOS Family. It's the exact same file, but with all the adult games removed out of it. If you choose during the install later on, it will ask, do you want adult games? If you click no, it takes this file, renames it to ms-dos XML and copies it in here instead. And with version six, that's 95 games I believe it cuts out. The games are still on your hard drive. The manuals are there. All the data is still there. They're just removed from the front end so you can't access them that route. You're not going to be browsing and accidentally come across Strip Poker or Voyeur or Lead Shoot Larry or whatever else we have in there. The Parents XML, we talked about that earlier. It's going to build that one. We have the platforms. And then all the playlists are in here. And so we have these lists are actually dynamic now. Um, like, I don't have a list of games anymore that are NT32 that I have to maintain. Instead, we have a series, and under that series field, it can say sound card support NT32. And this dynamic playlist auto adds any game that has that series field to the playlist. And that's much easier for us to maintain than having a list of games that we're constantly adding to, or even in some cases removing from, as we find broken MT32 games. Now we just change a tag in the main XML file, and it's automatically on the right playlist. Uh, we'll go ahead and close this down now. We're going to keep on going down. If you don't have a launchbox.zip file, you can continue. You don't have to have launchbox to use Exodos. It just makes it a lot easier, a lot prettier, a lot funner. But if you didn't have Exodos, uh, you can continue. And if you wanted to play the games, you would go to Exo. You'd go to Exodos. You would go into the DOS folder. You'd have to find the game you want to launch using the code name. It's like this is uh, Dom Patrol Head to Head, Dom Patrol... Uh, David Woolsey, I think, is that one? No, David Wolf, Secret Agent. So you would find the game you want to play. In this case, let's go to, uh, I think I just saw Dangerous Dave. That's a fun one. Dang Dave. That's co in copyright infringement? Yes, it is. You can run the game here by double-clicking on it. It'll say, do you want to install? We click yes. Hey, it's the same menu you get when you launch it from LaunchBox at this point. We won't change any of that settings. We don't need to. Uh, nope. And then the game is going to launch. And for those of you who have seen this before, I gotta fix my volume on this. For those who haven't seen that before, that was uh, id Software's attempt at making Mario Brothers 3, because at that point, PC games did not smooth scroll. You'd get to the edge of the screen, and it would load the next screen. Edge screen, load the next screen. The Nintendo, it moved along with you. Even diagonal, up, down, left, right. Um, if I remember the anecdote properly, Carmack stayed up one night, got it running. Romero came the next morning. There was a note piece, a uh, little uh, notepad, uh, what are they? a sticky note that said, hey, run this software. And it was basically Mario 3. And uh, they were blown away by it. They tried to talk to Nintendo about be, be creating an official PC port. Nintendo shot it down immediately so they put dangerous dave in instead and uh i believe that game was not officially released i think it probably just got popped up on some shareware sites at the time uh, i'm pretty sure it was never sold though if you run install again hey do you want to configure the settings or uninstall the game i'm going to uninstall it i do not want to make any backup saves and it is now off so the same way you can control the game from launchbox you can do that without ever having launchbox by going in these folders it's just not clean but if you have a different front end you want to use, if you're clever enough with your scripting, you can point it to this DOS folder, tell it use every um, BAT file, BAT file that has ends with a um, parentheses. Sorry, my mind is blank today. And that would be every launch file you need. And so if you auto added every ROM that had a closing parentheses dot BAT, 
then you would auto populate your front end with all the files you self running files you need to run Exodus. Now you still have to go find all the metadata and all the other cool stuff, but you can still do it. Moving on along, uh, we're going to get past all these checks that we see here. Um, at this point, it's going to check to make sure that you have a 64 bit version of Windows if you have Launchbox, because guess what? Launchbox requires a 64 bit version of Windows. Nothing I can do about that. That's Launchbox, man. Um, you can still install without it, though. It just skips Launchbox at that point. At this point, it's gonna, it says, hey, your, your files are all verified, and it's going to start unzipping things. First, it unzips Launchbox. Then it's going to go through and do all the Launchbox metadata, the images, um, the manual folder, that kind of stuff. Other packs that might be existing, it's going to take care of those, too. Um, we're going to come on down here further, and now we have... Oh, there's the Launchbox metadata. I got ahead of myself. It was giving messages up there. It does all the game data. This takes a while. It's got to go through 7,633 zip files and unzip all of them. It's about a 20-minute process on a fast machine. Luckily, it's only one time. Now, if you have media add-on pack, it's going to do that now. It's going to, oh, there's a video. Man, it is everywhere. That line. Now, luckily, it's, it exists, so it wouldn't hurt if I left it alone. But it makes my file a little bit smaller, a little cleaner if I take, take it out. Magazines, books, catalogs, soundtracks. Magazines takes freaking forever to install. It is 99 gigabytes zipped. But it's freaking awesome what you can do. Wait till I get my magazine video out. You'll want it. Um, moving on down. Now the game configuration files. It's going to go through and do all those. Finally, it does internal stuff. It takes the zip file, uh, the, un the util.zip file, unzips it. That's got the emulators, the MT32 ROMs, the updater, uh, special tools like um, ACE, the All Seeing Eye, GBC, Goldbox Companion. Um, we have Ultimapper in there, I believe. Uh, ARIA, which is our text downloader, uh, our, our text command prompt downloader. Here it's going to ask if you want to remove access to adult games. Yes or no? We already explained how that works. It merges your parents, it merges your platforms. Have you ever had your parents merged? We merge parents when we, uh, when we do an install here. Now we get to set up some global settings. Do you want full screen or widescreen? And you want, and what you can see here is it goes through, changes one comp file. It's a global configuration file. And then it creates a file like full.sel, like full select or win select. And that tells in the future when you're running it, it sees that and says, oh, I see you already have it set to full. Do you want to change it? Do you want to keep it? It then comes down and says, hey, what's your primary desktop resolution? This is important because if you're in window mode, it doesn't know how big to make your window. So this is how we were determining how big your window is. If you keep, if you pick full screen, this doesn't affect you as much, but there are still some games that have window things that open and that will be affected by this. You got large, medium, and small. Aspect ratio is either on or off. In volume five, if you click ask, all these things had to edit every single game's individual configuration file. It could take forever, especially if you were on a FAT32 drive. For some reason, those, there was a, 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 a loop issue on Windows and FAT32 that this could take hours. Um, it wasn't as bad as NTFS, but it still wasn't fast. Now it changes one file. It's a two second process. Aspect yes, aspect no. Now it's going to jump down to your any file. It's going to make all your things, you, make your shortcuts. It'll ask if you want an icon on your desktop. And once you sit, hit yes or no to that, your pack is installed. And you can come down here and you will have launchbox.exe. You will also have exo.exe, which is a new thing that we made. And that is cool because it is a shortcut exe that you can place anywhere you want on your computer. And it will always launch your version of launchbox in this folder. It's hard coded to your directory. Um, so that is how the install works now for version 6. Thanks for following along. Excited to get it out there. And uh, who knows, by the time we release it, every day I'm making changes. You saw, as I'm presenting it, I'm deleting lines out of it. I'll probably be adding lines tomorrow. Um, it's part of the fun of this, is it's a very dynamic project. Thanks for following along.